Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this amazing video, I am Aditya. In today's video, we are going to see another interesting concept of creating a custom input in Vue.js. So without any further ado, let's begin with it. So here we have a simple label here and then a simple plain input and a message attached to this input, more like a vmodel message. So whatever we type here is displayed over here, super simple and straightforward. So how about if we make this as a custom input where we just have to provide it a text and a vmodel and that's it and some label value if required. So what's it would be amazing but let's first understand why we need that. So suppose if this input was present on my maybe at around 10 15 different locations on the website or maybe in my application i'm using it in several components and i want to keep the design or the functionality of it intact so in that case i can just put it in a component because the purpose of the component is to reuse it in a most efficient way so if i have it as a custom uh, input component then it makes super simple to reuse it and also to style it because suppose uh, if I use it in 15 different locations on my web app or maybe 20 different files or in there are like lots of inputs in a form or whatnot then changing style of each one with CSS can be okay but it will be super complicated if you have to change CSS in several files also if you put it in one global file it would be very difficult to download a big bundle of CSS so because you need to create follow the same architecture or concept for every components and suppose you have a big project it might be super tedious so having a custom input makes it super easy to change or not just input but any component makes it super easy to change the value of it whether it could be css value or the layout and you could say like this thing is very close with that atomic design principle and here we will see like how to create a custom input and use it in our code. So let's try to convert this into a custom input. For that, let's first create a component here. So I'm going to say input. Let's start custom input actually. Or let's type input. <laughs> Input.view. Here, let's create a template. Now you have two options. You can either create just the input tag, custom input component, or you can have it grouped with label and other things. So let's do with labels. So let's say label. So we will wrap it in a div and here we will have label that will be our prop and along with that we will have our input. Now let's see what happens when we let's put it like this. Now let's see what happens when we get the component over here. So let's import it. I'm going to say import input from components input.view. And let's put it our components. Component input. Let's use it over here. So I'll be using it with a capital tag, capital letters actually. So input. And let's see what we have here. We have the input. That's great. Now let's if you know, let's see some attach some variable to it for a V model. So I'm going to take msv2 or message2, and let's do it something like custom input is same <laughs> let's pass it over here msv2 and let's put it over here vmodel equal to msv2 okay let's see if this is the end of it of course not let's bind it over here msg 2 or oh, sorry not bind but display and let's see nothing changes okay Let's use here vbind and let's do it something like dollar attributes. Let's see if this works. So if we go back again over here and go to our, let's make this bigger and let's make it uh, inspect. Could use a shortcut key for this. <laughs> and here, let's see what happens. So if you see the model value, it attached to this component over here. So either to the div tab. And if I type something now, it won't change. It will change nothing. So even if I do something like this, so we put vbind over here, but it is getting attached over here. So let's see what happens if we do something like this. So if I say 
I don't want to inherit attributes. So inherit attributes will be false. Let's see what happens in this case. So if we go back over here and let's see where is our component. This one, I guess. Yeah. So here that V model came straight away on our input. Okay, let's see if this solves our problem. No. Why it is not solving our problem? Well, the answer is in the documentation. So if you see when it comes to using a V model on a component, you need to emit an event from the component side as well. Okay, because this V model, oops, uh, yeah, over here only. So because when we put V model on this, as V bind attributes does nothing but whatever attributes you pass over here, it attaches over here. When you put this V model over here, you need to emit an event back saying that, hey, I am changed. And from the your parent or wherever you're using this component to say that, hey, you have to change if there is a new value. And to do that, we have something as update model value. Okay. So what I'm going to do, we just have to put it on an input event. So here, if we scroll down, it shows us the usage of it. So all we have to do here, make it work, have it here, something like input. Uh, this is going to be a function which will have an event and that event would be nothing but returning our e dot target dot value okay so this is returning the value that's great let's see what it does now nothing changed why because it returned the value but we are not binding that model value because if you see if we go back to our code over here we need to bind this model value with our v model and also with this inputs value. This might be confusing, but it will make more sense now when we write it. So let's take a prop over here. So I'm gonna say props. That props is model value. And here, model value. And here I'm gonna say, uh, okay. So we, okay, I guess we did a small mistake. We didn't emit at this, so that's why. Okay, so let's update model value and let's see if it works. So before we proceed, let's try this thing and let's see if it works. So here, let's remove this. Let's go back over here and okay, it works, but works weirdly. So let's see what wrong we did. So we have uh, edit. Okay, so this is the event and this is the value we are passing on this event. Oh, no, actually it should be, this thing should be like this. Okay, let me write it properly. So here we have to write, will be a function which would be emitting this event and it would be going with e.target.n. Okay, and then we can remove this piece of code from here. And let's see if it works. So if you see, I will type anything here, but when I refresh the page, the message is not binded to this. Okay, so if you see over here, the model value is there, but it is not binded with our input. Why? Because we haven't used that props and bind it over here. So how to do that? Very simple. We take that model value as a prop. I will say model value. And I will make it as a string. Okay. And simply, once we have that model value, all we have to do here is attach it to our value. Model value. And let's see if this works. So if we go back over here again and refresh this, so we have our input being binded. That's perfect. Let's see if it works too, right? And there it is. Pretty simple and straightforward. So let's refresh the page and try again. Okay, it's binded. That's great. Perfect. So even now, if we remove this, which we might need it if we want to add some extra class, so we will keep this. But even if we remove this, it won't make any difference because we already achieved it with this oops, 
with just these two lines. So we have attached the model value to our value and we emitted the event every time when the value is changed. So now everything works fine. So now let's make this custom input more purposeful by having it some CSS. So let's put some style and let's have it, let's give this class label some class. We can also put the for value, but for now let's skip it and let's just put a class here also. Let's put some class input and let's add the label. So I'm going to say label the div first. So I'm going to say div. Uh, this div will have the display of block set to flex. Uh, flex, uh, flex direction must be column because we want it one after the uh, over, one over the like, one above the other, and we want nothing else. And then we could do label. This can have margin bottom of maybe 15 px. Uh, color maybe of maybe somewhat something like this and font size let's put it uh, 20px and for the input let's do it something like this so input can be uh how to do it okay let's do adding let's give a 10px adding border of 1px solid uh, maybe hashtag ccc and let's give it some width of maybe 80 percent and last but not the least let's give it some margin uh, top of 2px yeah we should do it we can also give some border radius let's make it last but not the least the border radius <laughs> so border radius of 5px okay so we have our input well suited over here and we can put the label so we can say here something like label custom input this is how it looks uh, label custom input did we put the label oh no we didn't take it as a prop so let's take the label as a prop as well quickly so label we will take it as string and there it is we just quickly refresh it and we have our custom input here styling is a bit off but we can manage that that's not a problem but the purpose is to make it have like a consistent styling so assuming that this is made consistent with some css and then we can reuse this on each and every part of in each and every part of our code and wherever we like and however we like so let's do it something like say suppose i want to make this input flexible so currently we are accepting text so if i do type equal to text this will work fine but if I make it something like number, and if I go to our dev tools, this will start shouting at me. So if I start typing here, so if I refresh this first, and okay, so here if we start type something, okay, it's not shouting at me, but I'm not sure why. Maybe it will shout at me later saying that, or you might experience that saying it that, oh, you have a prop of string, but you are using a number. Maybe we'll try putting a number. Uh, okay, let's refresh this and uh, let's see type number okay that's perfect oh we did we put v bind attributes no that's fine so let's put v bind attributes so we'll say whatever it is extra attributes come in we will put it over here dollar attributes and this should work so if we refresh the page and if we type something Okay, it doesn't show as an error, but it doesn't allow us to type that string as well. But generally, you might see an uh, incident where it will say props of string is only given, but you are giving a number. To solve that problem, you just give multiple props. So here you would say it could be string or number, and that will solve our problem. So here it is text, but another, uh, other thing, like here I can just replicate this and put it as a number. Sorry, uh, as a text. So first it's a number, then I can put it as a custom input text and custom input number. Super simple. So I have one 
So if I type some alphabet, doesn't work. But if I type here, it works. Here, I type number, it works. So this is how you can have custom input. Of course, we have two V model. <laughs> Not a good example to attach one two V one V model to two different types. But the idea is to just have it make like one input, just change the type and V model, and that's it. Maybe some label if you like, and that's it. We are good to go. So that's all for this video. I'm thinking to make this uh, custom input video for React as well, to how to make a custom input in React. If you would like me to do so, please put it in the comment section. And if you feel that this video is worth sharing, please share with your network. Hit a thumbs up button if you like this video. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. So that's all from me. Till the next time, goodbye.